All right. So welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind Show with your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. We help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a really unique guest on today out of Florida, and I can't wait for you to spend some time and get to know him. Jim Shields is here. Hey, hey, Jim. Good to see you guys. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Amber. Good to see you. I want to. Uh, I want you to tell people about yourself a little bit, and then I want to dive into how you really use real estate to kind of fund and fuel your passion, because your passion is inspiring. I mean, your passion is. If you have children or you plan on having children, you got to listen to this one. Absolutely. So I think it's I think yeah. it's awesome. So Jim, tell us a little about you. Tell us first off, I'm gonna be mean to you out front. You live in Florida, right? I do, St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, nice. Now St. Augustine, is that West Coast or East Coast? East Coast, and it's the oldest city in America. So oh, wow. So you've been posting throughout the quarantine uh, the ocean every morning, and so what everybody that's hung around us knows is that our our mission is in about three years to be living in Florida. We're kind of looking in the Reddington Beach area, and so. We okay. love the ocean. We're scuba divers. We're ocean has been our our end game to get there. And in three years, when our 15 year old graduates, that's our plan. So every time yeah. I see him, I go for a while. I'm like, look at this. Look at his post. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And about the 12th post of the ocean, I'm like, I think I want to kill him. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> well, what I promised, you know, because because I I grew up in the Northeast, as you know, and I have a lot of family and friends up there. And it was just a simple gesture where I'm like. Man, all my like, I know you guys had a tough up there in the quarantine. I was like, I'm across from the beach. It's a private beach, so I was still able to go out for sunset and sneak in a surf, and um, and I would just do the sunset every day for family and friends because they said, you know, gosh, it really helps when they were stuck in Manhattan or in yeah. you know totally. Philadelphia and just other areas of, and so yeah, so it was good to share, and we'll look forward to having you guys down here soon. I'm I I love visiting the Northeast. I'm a Floridian though. It's like the weather gets to like 65 and I'm like, Ooh, this yeah. is cold. You know? <laughs> I can't wait to have that. Cause right now we, we laugh about that. We're like 65. That's shorts weather here in New York. Right. But when oh, yeah. you know, I can't wait to be that guy going, is this 70? Cause this, I, I gotta put a sweater on. Yeah. 70. Well, it's, it'll, be, it'll, it'll take about two seasons, but I'm telling you, you know, before I left Jersey, I'm, you know, you're walking out of the gym in t-shirts and shorts and 30 degree weather and having a conversation with your buddy. I'd be putting a stretcher now if I did that, you know, but, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like the Seinfeld parents, you know, it's like, oh, is it 95? I didn't even realize. It. You know, as long as you're by the water, like you guys said, if I'm in the water, you know, we're on a nice little barrier island. It just, I love the heat. I love the water. I'm the same as you and I, you know, yeah. Florida was a great place where I could have lifestyle and the real estate investing. Yeah. So it was, it was a good comment. I'm originally from Texas, so New York has been like, you know, and I've been here for what, 14 winters now? Yeah, that's actually, um, yeah. Oh, wow. You, you, yeah, you count what you're going to talk about with your yeah. world in summer. She counts I count the with winters. me in winters. Yeah, that's I've been here for 14 winters. So, you know, and, and I can't wait till the day we get to move back down south because I miss it desperately. And quarantine up here, it's not so bad now because the summers here are beautiful and we're able to hang out at our pool and stuff. But yeah, in March and April and May, it was still cold mm -hmm. out like all the time. So, yeah, it was, oh. it was. Cold and I gotta ask you before we, before we jump into real estate and your and your mission. I wanna I see the surfboard on the wall and I wanna tell you we took surfboard lessons in Costa Rica. Is a surfboard right? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, that's a surfboard. Yeah. So that that actually is. Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you the story behind that in a minute. But in Costa Rica, we're in Costa Rica. Oh, we've um, been there twice, but yeah, we were on the west coast. Okay. And we yeah. took lessons. I wasn't so I I've been kiteboarding. Love that. It took me. Well, I swallowed about 14 gallons of water yeah. learning it, but I, but I love that. That was in Aruba, I think. But we went there, and Amber got the hang of it better than I did. Getting up on that board, I have to be a little more flexible. A little I, more do, I do it's, yoga, so the like transition wasn't. But so what fun. yoga helps, skiing helps, skateboarding helps, and but like anything, Glenn, like surfing, real estate investing. I think to get a proficiency, not expertise, but proficiency, everything really takes a year. You got to take those bumps and bruises yeah. and tumbles for a year, and then all of a sudden things start to click into place. And surfing is no different. Um, and that board is a special one. My wife and I got married in Costa Rica oh. and almost almost 10 years ago. That's actually a Robert August, if you guys remember the movie, The Endless Summer. So Robert August and uh, son and my wife created that board together. That was my gift. I donated a kidney to my father almost 10 years ago. And that was my oh, wow. reward right there, a Robert August custom board uh, that my wife and uh, the August family designed together. So that, that, that actually has a, a special meaning to me. What yeah. a great 
That is wow, very, very cool. what a cool. great story. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, great story. I could easily see surfing being my new favorite thing, though. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If, you, if you end up being near us, we'll get you out in the water plenty. So That's Yeah, awesome. I love it. Well, tell us about your real estate journey, and then I want to know about the 18 summers, because that's what I—that's the most important thing I think that real estate gets you. So, tell us about your experience. You've done about a thousand flips, I think you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been in the game almost almost 22 years full time. Um, so, start you know in New Jersey, I, I left the Northeast to go out to California and found a little town called Bakersfield, California, um, where it was an investor's playground. You know, the the West Coast of of California, you know, the median price, like where I was living in Santa Barbara was like 900,000. But in Bakersfield, California, the median price was like 91,000, literally oh, one wow. less zero. So oh, it was wow. a great market to get into learning. I uh, started buying, fixing and uh, reselling HUD foreclosures. I uh, got into that really heavily, then started to hold property, rentals, lease options. Um, and then uh, in 2005, things got crazy, came here to Florida because uh, the fundamentals were stronger, it was a good move. You know, like everyone felt some pain through 07, 08, uh, but protected our investors, moved through it, and then got really heavily into bulk uh, foreclosures. Um, and that uh, that ran well. And then now I'm, I've evolved into new construction, flipping new construction. Uh, so it's it's been a, a good thing doing, again, the, the real estate full time for 21 years, almost 22. And about 10 years ago, um, I, I started a side business called... Uh, now called 18 Summers, because I just saw there were a lot of real estate, it started with real estate investors and entrepreneurs, but mainly real estate investors, because that's what I was, who were looking for support in, in, in staying successful at home. I saw a lot of people there where there was a yeah. mis imbalance, you know, right. and like you guys, I have four kids, um, you know, and your intentions are good to provide, but, but you have to put some things in place or it can get pretty lopsided. And about 10 years ago, it was a big part of my life. I was, uh, <laughs> And things hit all at once. Uh, you know, the business was was doing well and recovering out of the 2008 meltdown. Uh, but uh, you know, at, all at once, I was adopting two children, and I was donating a kidney to my father. And when you do wow. those things, I have two adopted, two biological children. And when you do those, I guess you just take as you your thing is mind shift. I had a mind shift on the value of family. You know, it really brought things into priority, into forefront, uh, and the experience definitely helped mold me. Uh, and we started to have organic retreats and workshops and give talks that were really uncomfortable and out of my comfort zone, um, but uh, ended up really catching on and, and getting into all sorts of things, even to some of the masterminds we're in together, uh, yeah. which is how I found it, not through real estate. So it's kind of a one-two punch now. I, I, real estate has provided everything of financial resource for me. I mean, the one specialized skill that I said that separated me from poverty and, and, and financial abundance was I've learned how to buy a house, fix it up and either rent it or sell it. That, that's it. That, that, was, that was my whole core. Um, and then branching off of that is I really want to help families make the most of their family life. Um, so it's, it's a nice combo. We tell our students that that you know real estate may not be like your end goal. It might just be a means to an end. It might be what sets you up financially to really go after your passion, whatever that passion is. Maybe it's starting a restaurant. Maybe it's you know doing something like you and in starting 18 summers. Tell us a little bit about what 18 summers does. I want to ask you. I want to go back a little bit before you do what it does, and I want to know. I'd like to know. Obviously, you had a lot of things happening in your life. Can you remember anything that was the main like, I'm out of balance. Like something needs to. Hmm, something question. needs to. You know, because I think we all have times in our life where we say, wait a minute, am I chasing the right rabbit here? What, it, right? And it was, it was, what was the moment you for know, you that? It, it was, you know, Glenn, there were moments like when, when, you know, signing the sheet of paper at the Mayo Clinic when I was going to donate the kidney, like people were like, oh, you're going to set it back. And my dad say, no, you're not, I'm not going to have you do it. And I was like, this is the right choice. You know, it's like real estate can suffer. You know, if it's going to, you yeah. know, it's okay if it suffers. And it didn't, it didn't suffer. Um, so there was moments like that. And I think, you know, where we've all gone through it, you know, when, when, when you go from, you know, I was always the fun uncle working with families. Then all of a sudden I met my wife 10 years ago, we fell in love instantly. And she, you know, was divorced with full custody, these two beautiful little boys. She had been through a really awful, awful first marriage that we'd speak openly about. She's inspired many women to move forward. There are these two beautiful little boys, you know, and I came into their life and we hit it off instantly, but it was a big responsibility. And when you step into, you know, our world, look, no one's going to say that real estate investing is easy. Um, I found if I was, you know, not present, if I was being short, you know, it, it, I just remember thinking, 
gosh, these a real estate deal hardship is not their fault, you know. And that one distinction where I'm like, I'm 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 distant and and in my head or even short with them, it's not their fault. And that 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 realization kind of stuck me in the gut. Um, so it wasn't necessarily one theme, Glenn, but it was just that feeling of like, whoa, wait a minute. Am, am I crossing a line here? You know, now I'm stepping into the, the, this family realm the day in and day out, and I have to keep keep things in check, if that makes sense. That's a really that's a really good observation. I think all of us get, you know, if you do one or two houses, it's different than when you start doing multiple deals and you're doing a lot of business and you have people that are working for you, you know, the stresses can build up. And you're right. Yeah. It's funny. It's you take funny. it out on the ones you love if, yeah, you're, not, just, if you're not aware. I think that's a powerful yeah. line is it's not their fault. Like right. that's such a powerful yeah. line to think about. They have zero to do. When they come to you and say, like, we've got a five and a seven and a 15 and now our 20 year old works for us in the company. But, you know, even my even last night, we're trying to we have a big event going on. We're trying to do stuff. And little the little guy's like, hey, I need this. I need that. And I'm like, I'll be right with you. And I can hear in my tone. I'm not quite being the dad I want to be at that moment. Mm. And the yeah. truth is, you're you're right. It has nothing to do. He's saying he's saying to himself, "You're my dad. I don't care if you make money, don't make money. I don't care. The money doesn't exactly. mean anything to me. I want your love." Yeah, I did. I did the yeah. same thing the other day. I felt I I heard myself like mm. I'm like above myself, and I heard myself being impatient, and I immediately apologized. I'm sorry, I was being impatient. What you know? What can I do for you? But yeah. but you do have to be aware, and I think sometimes we get so like just in the thick of of what's going on in our own minds and we don't even realize we're doing that but if you could like watch yourself back on a video or a yeah, tape recorder exactly. it would just be oh it so, would hurt yeah, a little bit of, of awareness and, and game filming yeah it's 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 important and and it takes some some understanding to to really get to that point like what you just said that takes some serious awareness to get there. And I think one of the things is, and you guys have to give yourself credit, and I'll give myself credit because entrepreneur parents beat the hell out of themselves because <laughs> we really care. And when we mess up, we feel it. Um, but I think it's it's really important to know that just the fact that you're saying, I'm going to apologize, that's huge. And I can tell you why. I've done uh, you know several three-day retreats with lots of you know, really big thought leaders out there, entrepreneur leaders that, you know, it, it, it was it was an honor. They weren't interested in my real estate deals. They were above my real estate deals, to be honest, but they wanted help yeah. with family. And and what we found was just this this common theme where somehow, look, we we take it very seriously to provide and protect, provide and protect, you know, but sometimes all they want is you. And yeah. you, you do not just because you're providing and you're working through a deal that has 15 things going wrong and you got to pull out all the stops to make sure it goes through and this and that it wasn't fair. It doesn't give you immunity from being present. It doesn't give you an immunity for being apology from apologizing. It definitely doesn't give you immunity to act like a jerk, you know, and I'm raising my hand where you're short and saying, oh, well, do you not realize how hard this deal or I'm providing? And just that awareness, you know, that we're. Yeah. The three of us are realizing is half the battle. It really yeah. is half the battle. And some of them, I, it, it, and I was there where you're like, well, do you know how hard I'm working, how hard I'm providing? That's fine. It doesn't give you immunity. It does not give you immunity from respect and, and apologies. That's for sure. And it's hard for entrepreneurs, especially some bigger, you know, yeah. you know, people who are on a, almost a pedestal with huge followings to apologize. But once you do, a sincere apology and a genuine compliment are two of the best things I've ever found in family. I, I read this a couple of years ago and it really resonated and really stuck with me, but kids spell love to E-I-M-E and part yeah, of is. spending time with them is being present and is being like, you know, right there on their level and doing what they want to do, not what you want to do or your idea of what's fun for them. And, you know, just, just really being connected with them. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so, and, and go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you go ahead, Jim. Well, I was going to say, I wrote a book and it, it was a, it was an Amazon bestseller in three different categories, parenting, entrepreneurship, and, and money and finance. And it's about entrepreneurs making sure they spend time with their family with some simple principles. And one of the things was what you were saying, Amber, a danger is you should not delegate yourself out of family life. You know, there is no substitute for quality time, not money, not fancy private schools, not all the materials of this, that, and the other. When you really look at, at family units that have succeeded, where they're still close, where once the kids leave the house, you know, after the 18th summer, normally there's still, there's still a bond. It's the people that didn't try to delegate themselves out of family life, but actually committed to quality time, like you were saying. Right. 
you know, committed, I think is the big word there, right? You, you have to you have to really make an, especially being an entrepreneur, our, our minds are so geared around what you just said, like providing for our family. And we, we, we were always, you know, I'll speak for myself and I'm probably speaking for some of you and you're saying, I'm gonna provide for my family. And that's what I'm doing. I'm providing, I'm providing, I'm providing. But in the meantime, are we? Because we yeah. might be providing financially, but at the end of the day, so what? My my dad, yeah. when I lost my dad a couple of years ago, you know, he it, he was my hero. And he, my dad, well, he joked all the time about how poor he was. But I tell you, he was the richest guy I ever knew. Yeah, there he it really is. was the yeah. richest guy I ever knew. He, he hardly had any money at all when he, he his whole life. He never he worked. You know, he was a he was a meat cutter. His I think his highest salary was twelve thirteen bucks an hour. And but he provided for four boys. Took us on these incredible fishing trips. Incredible things he did with us that we look back and think, like as an adult, you, you didn't appreciate it as a kid. But you look back and thought. What a bunch of work they put in to do this, especially with no help and no money. But we didn't know we were poor. We had yeah, no idea exactly. we were poor. But they didn't, they didn't talk about that. They just they just gave us those memories. And there are challenges yeah. with you know raising a family without having that higher income. But there's also challenges about having the kind of income that you could give your kids whatever they want. But then also teaching Very much them. Much so. It, it's a delicate balance. You know, some yeah. of the giving a kid an endless ATM machine is a recipe for disaster and i see it with a lot of first generation wealth because we work so hard and we couldn't have that so you want to give that if any have learned anything from doing 10 years of retreats and getting some really deep conversations open masterminds with whole families it's it's a it's a bad idea um you know where we have to keep a line but like you said amber like i so appreciate real estate because i've been able to do things that i'm the only entrepreneur of a, of five kids in my family and i was the one no one else could raise their hand to donate the kidney to my dad as much as they loved him they just they were not in the position to do it you know and i, I the, taking six weeks off and taking rv adventures with my family i can't forget you know living in costa rica for a few weeks these are things like you said glenn where it's, it's, it has the theme of your dad but also the support to be able to do it a little deeper and, and yes. go a little bigger with it um yeah. but if we if we what if what if i we don't because i've done that too where it's like we're so tied to the business that we miss the 18 summers and that's that's why i like to tie it to i mean you guys i have a 16 year old as well i mean we're we're, we're coming into a, a different phase of life any way you look at it anyone can deny it i mean but but parents who have it was a mentor of mine said jim these talks this was 10 years ago he's my first speaking coach he said these talks are so important he was a great dad three kids but their his daughters were grown he says my daughters are still my daughters but i'm telling you it's different you have an unbelievable opportunity right now um before they leave the house that your your time diminishes and there's actually i can't remember the author it's a, it might be daniel pink it's some someone that said the average person will spend 85 percent of all the quality time they ever have with their children by the end of their 18th summer okay. so the years are not all equal um you know and it, it, what it, but as we talked about with awareness um you and I right now are going, oh my gosh, we've got two summers left, 15%. That's the average person. I think when you put focus and intention on it, that 15% is the average. Maybe you can stretch it to 20, 25, 30% more time. But any way you look at it, when they leave the house, you know, and they go into college and this and that, I'm sorry, my, my 16 year old doesn't hang out with me as much as my five year old does. We're, yeah. We get along great, but it's just that way. So we want to make sure as we're building the business and we're going into our real estate deals, we're keeping a balance like we're talking about because th these years are not all created equal the, and what what you can do with them at 24 is not the same what you can do with them at 12 not even close yeah not to mention that in psychology they say that a, a child's personality and like their disposition is really formed between ages zero and seven so yes. you know the more time you can spend with them and help them <clears throat> build those those strong quality traits and have those core values that's when oh, yeah. that is formed that that's you're right that is like the 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 lane of the foundation right yep. we all know you buy that house with the bad foundation i used to love to avoid those rehabs because man you know doing the oh i don't want to jack the house and this and that and just no thanks and i just maybe you got i couldn't stand a foundation once you lay They're a good foundation <laughs> yeah no it's it's a tougher job and you lay a good foundation you're there and then yeah like you said zero to seven and then they say between ages nine and eleven that's when individuality really starts to set in Right. Each kid is different, right? You have four, I have four. They're all completely different. Very but different. Nine to eleven is individuality, and they need us there, and not as not as you know, um, headmasters and and disciplinarians all the time, but as guides, guides and as sounding boards. And my wife ran Montessori and Waldorf schools for years, and I've oh. just learned so much of that. 
you know, when, when I went to school was sit down and follow me, listen up. And the Montessori and Waldorf is follow the child, let them go deep into what they are and, and give them a little support around it. And we do a lot of alternative education and it was scary at first, but now I'm seeing with my teen boys, man, we need to be active teachers to our children, whether you homeschool, unschool, private, public school, you need to be an active teacher with your children. And it's, it's an incredible bonding experience. I think there's a lot there's a lot to it that when people are hearing this now, people might be thinking, well, what can I do or whatever? It's so much in how we are and how we act. My yeah. my dad never and my mom too, they never really gave us um well, mom did so some stuff, but dad dad showed by his actions. It wasn't he didn't always he didn't tell us what to do and tell us this or tell us what to believe or tell, but we just I think it's so poor because our kids, they'll always do what we do, not what we say. Oh yeah. Well and you, we you said the, the best you, yeah, for ourselves. You, no, and you said that, and that was something we talked about during the pandemic a lot when I was doing a lot of calls, as you can imagine. And what I realized was, is we set the leadership tone. It is a trickle down effect. Like you just said, your dad set the leadership tone where he was like, hey, we're going to enjoy ourselves. It might not be, but he, he wasn't a, a talker. He was a doer. And, right. and whatever leadership tone we're setting, it's showing. If our kids are having extra team grumpiness and, you know, toddler meltdowns, we might have something to do with that. Can you completely get rid of those things? No, but you can minimize them. And a lot of it comes back to what's the leadership tone we're setting through a pandemic, through a real estate crash, through a, you know all the things through a bad deal. Um, that's so important because, like you said, they're gonna they're gonna follow suit. They are really gonna follow suit. I think that um, a lot of it comes to so people tend to um, parent how they were parented because that's their normal and. Thankfully, you know, I grew up in a super strict house and it was very much like what you were you were saying before. Um, okay. Thankfully, I got some I, I got educated on the subject and I parent very differently than how I was parented, which I think is a lot healthier. You know, none of us are going to be perfect and do everything perfect all of the time. No. But I think things, you know, as even more research comes out and, you know, whether you're pro spanking or against spanking or whatever and there's a, there's more research that comes out that that can arm us with different tools in our tool belt to handle different situations in a healthier less um violent way <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely and i think we did i did a retreat uh with about 20 families out in utah about two years ago with uh, dr shafali i don't know if you've ever heard of, of conscious parenting she was on oprah oh, really, yeah. Oh, yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. and conscious parenting just to break down the book is saying you want to parent consciously because a lot of us are parenting unconsciously. Like you said, Amber, I was in a strict Irish Catholic home and there were certain things that I don't agree with, you know, or think were the best effective use uh, of parenting. And, but I, we fall into that unless we actually take a step back and are like, wait a minute, should I be doing this? Or is this just the way it was done? So I'm following suit. Right. Um, and it's a totally different level when, when, when you take that on. And, and with that, I think it was, one of you just said it, when people go, what's your best bit of uh, of advice for family? And I say it time and time again, guys, there is no perfect family out there. I don't, I don't know who created that silly saying, perfect family. It doesn't exist. It's That's a benchmark that's impossible, all sorts of, it, it, it really has hurt more families than anything. I've found that family life's about bridging imperfections. You know, it's not about, you know, being perfect because that's just impossible. It doesn't happen. We all know that. But sometimes we inspire to that unconsciously and it puts in a lot of pressure and True. and just negative um, just energy around the family because it's just it's an impossible standard. Yeah. I want people I want to ask you more questions, but I want people our listeners to know how to how to find you now. I want to do it again at the end. But how can they find you if they want to know more about Jim and 18? Yeah, if you want to learn more about our you know talks, we workshops and, and education programs, just go to 18summers.com. Um, you can pick up a couple of, we have some free PDFs to get you started. And then also my book, which is short, easy read, um, is, is a good starting point for certain principles that have helped a lot of families ground and, and connect more. It's the, it's the numerical 18, right? One, eight, one, eight summers.com. Yeah. 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 Good. So it's, a, it's a simple math equation that I know we all do in our heads. Once you hear it, once I heard it that first time from my mentor, I was like, whoa, wait a minute that's not that much time, you know, because my two oldest sons I adopted at seven and five. So I'm like, wait a minute, I only have 11 left. Wait, I only have, yeah. you know, it's 13 left. That's not a lot of summers. That's, that's, that can go by like that. So, you know, we, we've found, so we have a 20 year old who's almost 21 and he, um, he now works for multiple companies of ours. He actually is a, oh, is a manager of our Airbnb business and he works at our, 
our speaking company. He, you know, he's kind of the utility player in our company. Yeah. You know, he, and, and he's learning a lot. And he's been, and he remind the other day he reminded me. He said, "Well, Dad, I've been doing this since I was 13. I, I was doing your videos back when you first did them." I said, "Oh, we do so many things we don't even remember. It makes an impact yeah. on our kids. We forget." We yep. forget things that we did that make an impact. And so the one thing I was thinking that I was, want to talk to you about, at the last mastermind that we were at together, one of the guys got up and said, you know, one thing that real estate's done for me, he said, is that I, well, now when I go on vacation, I bring my whole family with me. I bring my kids and their wives and their kids. He said, you know, and it cost me 30, 40, 50 grand to go on vacation, but I can do that because of real estate. So it's oh, yeah. almost like you're not extending your summer, so to speak, but you know, you kind of are, you're extending more time and it may not be the same quality time, but you, you have, it'll allow you to spend that kind of quality time with your family. The, the finances are a means to an end Yeah. to extend yeah, yeah. that. I, I, without real estate, there's so many things I couldn't have done. You know, when, when my wife and I got married in Costa Rica, I was able to fly, you know, uh, some relatives down, my parents down, put them up, do their things, have the dream what, you know, couldn't have done that without real estate. Yeah. And when it comes to, you know, our kids, like 18 summers is a marker. But I know with the relationship we had, I, I have every intention with the money that I work hard, there's probably going to be a winter getaway and a summer getaway. Yeah. And I will spend a big check because if we're going to have that laughter and be playing Jenga and on an yes. adventure together, it, it'll continue. But again, there's two things I think that have to happen. You have to lay the foundation now because if you're, Absent for your kids through those first 18 years, yes, don't expect them to, you're going to be a stranger. And secondly, look, money's not the most important thing, but it's important. That's yeah. what I got really clear on. And I, and I make this distinction for a lot of people. I'm not, I, I'm not passionate about real estate. I'm really not. Um, but I'm very passionate about what it's provided for me. Correct. And, and I, I like the tangibility of it. It made sense to me. It's tied into an important part, but I'm sorry. I don't go, Oh, it's another rehab. I'm sorry. That's just not. Yeah. We're, just, we're the same way. We get it. We get I it. absolutely love what you said, though, about, yeah. about that if you don't build that relationship during those 18 years, they're not going to want to have anything to do with you later, well, regardless yeah. of whether they were paying for their vacation money, or not. Money can buy you things and experiences, but money cannot buy you connection. Money cannot buy you um, Inti like, intimacy yeah. and time. Money can't buy the, you know, we're, we're struggling right now a little bit with my uh, seven-year-old, and she's... She's a tough one. She's a girl. She's a, you know, we have boys and girls. So we, do you have, do you have girls too, Jim, or just boys? I have three, three boys and a girl. I have a five-year-old. So you know. Girl, so okay. Know. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that gets worse, by the way. So we're, it'll, it'll, well, it'll you. test everything in your book. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but they also grab your heart in a way that you love your boys, but they All grab right. your heart in such a way. It's amazing. But um, my seven-year-old now, there's been times when Amber's like, I'm like, boy, I'm, I try and snuggle with her. I try and do stuff and she's not being, she's pushing away. And I'm like, what's going on? She's, you, you got to spend time. And what I, what I didn't realize was that during quarantine, I am the bus. So I've been the bus for my kids forever. I wouldn't like put them on the bus. So we take our kids to school. So every morning I get up, I take one kid to school, then come back the other kid to school. Cause they're in different schools, whatever. Well, I missed that time. And as, 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 yeah. as tiny as it sounds, the 10 minutes driving back and forth to school every day was our time. Chassie and I had, we had that time together that was daddy and chastity and that was our time. There was no other kids yeah. with us. It was just us. And losing that through the quarantine, so focused on our business and how do you pivot and how do you survive and what's going to happen and the world, gonna, we're going to turn to zombies and all the craziness going on. One day I said to her, I said, honey, we haven't had our special time, have we? She said, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. And so I put her in the car and we took off for a little drive. And, you know, so we're, I'm trying to recreate those things, but you don't, I don't think we realize as parents the impact that we have. And you just you I think that was brilliant what you yeah. said, Jim. You money will not buy that in the early days. It won't buy it in the later days either, but it certainly won't help you in there. You can't just ignore it while you're building wealth and expect to go back and buy their love. You're not gonna do it. You've got to no. do it now. During those exactly. 18 summers, you've got to do it. Well, and you plugged in and you haven't even read my book, so you're you're no. ahead of the game. But the number one principle when people say, and I think I mentioned this at at our CG together. You know, if you listen to nothing else I say, nothing else from what I've seen in 10 years, you you need to separate the parts to strengthen the whole. If you have four children like us or three children or two or even one, get one on one. One on one time is is so potent and 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 such a strength builder to a relationship. And you just hit the nail on the head that little bit of time during the pandemic. My daughter in those pictures, 
that was my special little gal. Everyone else would want to sleep. She was up with me to go see the sunrise every morning. And it was just magic. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I really am intentional with scheduling one-on-one -on -one time with each of my children. And you don't even realize you're doing it, Glenn. Yeah, well, not even daily. I do I do a longer day quarterly and then shorter times in between. I'll, I spend my whole book, so you guys know, is about I take a half a day each quarter with each of my children, sometimes a full day, but one on one. And so it's, you know, what's that? Four days a quarter. But I've just learned this time, you know, separating the parts to strengthen the whole. What comes out of spending one on one time without my wife, without their friends, without without um, their siblings, Takes away without the sibling rivalry. With that, my phone. Well, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, the rule, that's of, a big one. rule of my book is one on one, no electronics, and a fun activity of their choice that I follow for the day. If she wants to go to the alligator farm, we're going to the alligator farm. Awesome. If she wants to go to um, the petting farm, we're going to the petting farm. Like whatever. That's just my daughter. My son wants to go fishing. You know, I'm, we're going to go out fishing for the day. And I'm, I, I like to fish. Surfing's my passion. But I love being with my son. So if he wants to fish, but they pick the day. That's my whole book. There it is. You don't. No one has to read it. You can buy it anyway. But you know, get one on one. Turn off your phone and do something fun for the day. Because one that does is decompresses, puts the focus on the one relationship, and usually some big conversation comes at the end if you start to do this every quarter, like I do. You're thinking every quarter is that enough? Look, we get so busy. I mean, you could ask your listeners right now. How many of you? for the last four or five years have spent a day a quarter with each of your children one-on-one -on -one without your phone on. I guarantee it's gonna be less than 10% yeah. easily oh, yeah. um, because yeah. you don't set that intention. But that one-on-one -on -one time, like you said, Amber, in, in smaller daily increments, I'm always trying to steal family time, but I'm always trying to steal one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah, yeah, because one-on-one -on -one time, just it, there's something about it. It's one of the most potent relationship builders out there and it's just overlooked. I never had one-on-one -on -one time with my dad with five kids ever. I think I remember one time. And um, I think people make it too complicated too. You don't have to go out and take them somewhere. It could be 10 minutes that you sit down and color in a coloring book or play Legos or play with their dolls with them. It, 10 minutes, 15 with, minutes. Without, without the, without the, zzz, zzz, yes. Zzz, zzz, yeah, as right. soon as that hits, as soon as that hits, you're not even there. You're not even right. present. Um, and you're setting off like my, my daughter. I think I told you guys this story before home from the day normally my phone goes off 5 30 to 7 30 every night like it's either 5 30 7 30 or 6 to 8 two hour blank boom i'm not being disturbed we're getting on the trampoline i didn't turn my phone off Zzz, mm -hmm. i get that thing man someone really screwed the pooch on a deal like simple title stuff i'm like you got to be kidding me so there in my head working it out we're on the trampoline swearing under my breath and my daughter looked at me and said daddy why are you so mad at me and it's yeah. like uh, it's heartbreaking that's like oh. yeah to the chest. Yeah, that's right. right. But uh, our one-on-one -on -one time had been ruined. So right. this thing, which I have off right now, because we're on, you know, is like, it's, it's, a, it's a killer. It, it helps run our business, but you got to have time away from it as well. I think, I think the main thing that you're saying to everybody is that you've got to be intentional about this. You know, we're intentional about our business. We're intentional yeah. about our goal set for our business. And yeah. we have to be so intentional as parents that we are giving our best to them every time. And I, as you were talking, I was thinking about my son because my son loves to fish. Now, I'm not a huge fisherman. I grew up doing it a ton with my dad, but I love to scuba dive. That's my thing. Now, he's been scuba diving. Yeah. I think he he likes scuba diving like I like fishing, and I like fishing like he likes scuba diving. So we're a little bit off. But all growing up from probably, what, 13, 14, we always took trips together as, yeah. as he and I. We took these trips. And so I started doing father-son trips with him about 15, 16, where I go to Florida for three to three, two or three days. And we go – you know, so for, you know, do different things, but a lot of times we go fishing. We have all these great pictures and, and not just pictures, but memories of us, you know, bringing in the mahi mahi and, you know, just, just he and I and having yeah. those more adult conversations at the 50. And, you know, you don't always have to parent during those times, but you can always sneak in a little wisdom when you can, you know, and, yeah. but it's, it's that time. But you don't, you don't, you don't need to make 50 lectures. Just being there. Yeah. You, yeah. you spoke a thousand words that you probably couldn't speak as well verbally as you have just from, yeah you know, actions, like you said. So what do you tell somebody that is listening to this now and saying, I have messed this up. I have not been good. I've been so focused on my goals. I haven't done this. And their kids are eight, 10 or 15, 16. And they're realizing they have two summers left. And they, what do you tell those people? Because that's, there's people on the line probably thinking to themselves, yeah, so I wasn't expecting this today. And now I'm rethinking my life a little bit. And I hope that they, you've been very powerful today. And I want to know what you tell those people that have limited time left and they say, oh, 
Now what? Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, wealth and relationships work in the same. So I'll be the, I've done bad real estate deals. I mean, I, I, I can't stand the people that get them and say, I've never done a bad and deal. We, and and we I'm all, like, well, then yeah. you haven't. So, so we've <laughs> done, done bad real estate deals, but the three of us would not sit on here and go, oh, that deal I did three years ago. And then you, you, you got to get back on the horse, right? You can't just, it's like, it was a learning lesson. What happened? Yeah, I lost some money, moved through it. I learned this. I'm going to do this differently. So what I tell the parents like that is, first of all, yeah, you messed up, but sometimes your intention were good. You're probably trying to provide or protect or you're going through something on your own. Let's let's not let's not beat ourselves up with that. I'm not saying to excuse yourself, but don't don't hold it on yourself. So you're you're not able to make the most of of that time that's right in front of you. So it's like stop beating yourself up because entrepreneur parents, I don't know what it is, how we're wired, we really beat the hell out of ourselves. We want to so be the best at everything we do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And 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 just like little action steps go a long way. I remember, you know, when I was doing my volume of foreclosures, if I would make, uh, you know, five offers a day by Friday, I would usually have my two houses. My goal was two houses a week. I'd have my two contracts. So it's just those little deposits, right? Start with small things and keep going. Oh, I made offers for a whole week and I didn't get any, and then I stopped. Well, that's not going to succeed your real estate business. These yeah. are continual deposits. You haven't been there. So just like building a business, rebuilding the relationship, you need to be patient. They might not want to open up to you about, you know, sex and drugs and peer pressure if you haven't really been there right away. But I'm telling you, if you start to just make the time, show the commitment, have your phone off, give that, the odds of, of reforging a strong foundation are much better. But you can't be carrying the whole past with you and beating yourself up. And you can't also, you know, not be willing to give the little baby steps. We're not looking to, to build the Taj Mahal for our first single family flip, right? Those yeah. little deposits. That's what I tell people. Start yeah, small with these overnight. little. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You got to commit for the long term. And man, a lot can happen in two years. A well, lot can happen in two years. Oh, yeah, yeah that's absolutely. True. That's true. Yeah, you can reconnect in that time. as long, as, yeah. But you have to be consistent. One of the yeah. things that, that I think real estate has done for me is, you know, the whole mom guilt thing is very real, you know, when you're oh, a working time. mom. And I like to work. I, I make no apologies for that. I like to be, Nor should you. You know, participate and contribute and create and build. I like all that stuff. And I also like setting that example for my kids. But Fantastic. I also like that I have a very flexible schedule because I am in real estate and I can still go to all of their school events. I can still be there if they're sick. I can still take off a day if I want to spend one of the days with them. I, I can I have that flexibility. And that's what real estate, just like it's been, been able to fund your 18 summers and that's your real passion. For me, I get to kind of have the best of both worlds. I get to to work without having that strong mom guilt of having a nine to five job where I don't have that accessibility to my children. Exactly. And this is where, honestly, mom guilt would would be such a disservice to you right now because you've created what a lot of people want. They want flexibility. They want some financial freedom and the ability to say the event at school is at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. No problem. I'll be there. Yep. And and it's I know exactly what you're talking about, but it, it we we should never apologize for being entrepreneurs if we're setting certain rhythms and values in place. Because your family, like you just said, Amber, this is a powerful thing, would probably be worse off if you weren't being what you're doing now. Does that make sense? I wouldn't be being authentic to myself. No, and that and that's yes, that's that's, that's the wor that's the worst example you can set for your kids. The worst. Right. Saying I don't really want to be a full stay-at-home mom, um, but I'm going to. So almost like you're now a slide. Uh, you're a you martyr. Slow dying, slow dying martyr. Yeah, and it's like no thanks. I think I don't want to teach my kids to become slow dying martyrs. Right. I want them to you know be be giving and 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 you know contributing to the world. But I don't you know we don't want that for our kids, so we shouldn't want it for ourselves. It's a terrible right. example. So good on you for you know, keeping that balance, but, but making the most of it saying, I can take off right now. I can do this. Um, I can go scuba diving in Florida this time. So the, the quarantine has given people tremendous opportunity to take advantage of something like this. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people haven't, and I'm sure some people have, I'm sure people have strength relationships. Some people have probably broken relationships, but I think that 
we're probably not done with quarantines, unfortunately, not in the not in the northern states. I, you know, don't even get me going down that path. But it, yeah. you know, I think that people that are hearing this now, if you didn't take advantage of this during, you should do it all the time anyway. But even during a quarantine, now you've got time, and don't don't mistake. I, what I hear you saying is, don't mistake time in the house for quality time with your kids because right. they're two very yeah. different things. Exactly. And if I guess if we can leave them with this one thing, let me leave with a challenge. Again, start small. 60 years ago, the study showed that the average dinner time was 90 minutes. Um, today, uh, at least before the pandemic, it was about 12 minutes. 12. We're all rushing off to something normally again, the phone or something like that. The challenge I said is one hour, one hour a day. If you're going to be stuck at home, if we go into more you know, lockdowns and that one hour a day, try to set dinner at the same time, six to seven, five thirty, six thirty, and demand as the leader of your family, a tech fast. Mm -hmm. That means not TV, not laptops, not phone, not that. And that's for me all the way down to, to whoever, because all of a sudden you've just created a space that's consistent, that's reliable, that outside influences can't affect and you're stuck with what's right in front of you, which is a great wow. thing that we forget and you're not rushing away. So the dinner time challenge has been huge. Start with an hour a day where you promise all technologies off, set dinner at the same time, and actually sit there and talk. It, it's it, it's it might feel a little weird and creepy for people that are normally you know grabbing for it, but that one thing is like a a starting point uh, to to start to to build things out. I love that, Jim. This has been you know we've done a lot of these these uh, um, podcasts. podcasts, and this is probably my favorite. I, no I was just thinking the same thing. No offense <laughs> to anybody else. I mean, yeah, the other ones are great, yeah, but you is, know, when we start talking about family, it just yeah, just re with, with us. If you spend any time with us, we this you know family resonates with us. And hearing, I think you know, you're reminding me to make sure that I stay focused on trying to be the best dad I can be. And as you're as you're talking, I'm thinking to myself, geez, I'm you know, I'm beating myself up in my head, going, I should have done better there. You know, I'm already doing it because we're entrepreneurs, kind of what we do. But this, yeah, I just want to thank you. For, I want to thank you for coming on because this has been really awesome for for me and and no no bs this is just this has been my favorite because i think that this is just what i need to hear and what i think at the end of the day it's what matters yeah the yeah, money it's what we, we go to our grades it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if we have a billion dollars in the bank if we have if we have broken relationships in our in our wake it does not matter it doesn't yeah. matter you know, i agree it's, it's, i agree the balance of both but you've really shown that you can you can do that so I, I hope everybody goes and checks out 18 summers because that's truly what we have with our children and th that's what matters in life that's what matters. yeah tell, tell everybody one more time where they can find you and, and connect with you yeah just sure want to. just go to uh go to 18 uh you can find us on instagram at 18 summers tribe um we're usually posting videos and some good content there and learn more about us you can go to our website 18summers.com um and you'll be able to get some free downloads there getting some uh some some starter stuff to get your family uh, regrounded and simplified. So valuable. Awesome. Jim, thanks so much for being here today. Right, we guys. really appreciate it. All right, guys, All we'll right. see you on the next podcast. Take care. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments, and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.